Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a really, really great week. Gonna do a screencast video this week and it's gonna be based on building a mobile app. And this one's gonna be a little different. Um, I used to just type in my screencast, but in this one, I actually wrote everything out. So don't read any of this first, but I just wrote it out first and we're gonna just talk through it. So I don't have to type because typing and explaining is actually kind of difficult. So anyways, let's just get going. So. I hear this statement a lot, so it's kind of like, I want to build a mobile app, but I feel like many people underestimate what it takes to build one of these things, and I think building a mobile app is really good for anyone who's learning how to program or anything like that, but the whole point of this video is to kind of dive, or at least introduce the tip of the iceberg of what it takes to build one of these things, and it might be a little more than you expect, so I want to build a mobile app, a lot of people say this, but how? okay but how so no typing this video just follow my voice I have everything written out here and we're just gonna go through it one step at a time alright first I have this section called pre-building and before you even start building a mobile app just make sure you ask yourselves what exactly are you doing this for so one it just could be purely an exercise to learn programming that's totally cool you could be building a mobile app as a fun side project you know this is just another thing you wanted to pick up um, finally you could be building one for someone or for some money aka it's a job so just based on these you might have different expectations or what you want to get out of building this thing all right so just keep a couple of these things in mind first next I just want to talk through a couple of quick misconceptions that many people might have or maybe beginners might have but it takes more than just knowing a singular framework to build a mobile app. I find some engineers think that, oh, if I just learn iOS or Android, I can build like a Snapchat level mobile app. And you probably can't do that. So it takes a lot of different types of engineers working together to make a high quality app. You can still put something out there if you only know like iOS, for example, but it's gonna be a pretty simple and pretty probably a crappy, probably a pretty crappy one. So if you wanna build like a high fidelity mobile app that you know is fancy that you you probably are the ones that are using every day you're just going to take a lot of engineers all right so just make sure you have that expectation you're not going to be building snapchat by yourself all right so first thing i just want to break apart the building blocks of a mobile app in between the front end and the back end first all right so we're just going to tackle front end first and then we're going to go on to back end and for each section there are a couple of key points that we're just going to talk over. So front end first. All right, guys. So front end, um, pretty self-explanatory purpose. The purpose is just going to be you're implementing the design and the vision of the product. So this is just basic table stake stuff, but pretty much at the core, you're building the UI of this product. So, so any front end product or front end engineer, you're always judged. Your work is judged, you are judged, you're judged, you're judged as a person and your engineering chops, but actually it's pretty much you're judged on how well the application looks and behaves. So all the details count, right? Like it's easier said than done to make something smooth, scroll smoothly. So if you use an app every day and it's super smooth to use, don't discount all the work it took to making that happen, all right? So table stake stuff is just the UI. Um, another thing front-end engineering has to work on is the basic navigation of the app. So pushing and popping out of different flows, keeping parallel user states in the app intact. So if you just go to your phone right now, if you just open your phone, go to any app that you use any day and just ask yourself, how would you design and implement the navigation in this app? So every app has a different navigation and Different navigations work better for different use cases, but if you just sat there and thought to yourself, how would I implement the navigation? How would you do it? Like, how would you draw it out? What like code would you use? What data structures would you use, etc. So this is also non-trivial. Um, another front-end point that we can't deny is the performance, and any good front-end application or any good mobile application will be very performant. So just a couple quick points here is you don't want to kill people's battery life like if you look on the phones 
you know which apps kill a lot of batteries and you don't want that to be your app. So just a couple examples, network performance, don't download huge things, don't use huge bandwidth if you're not on Wi-Fi. Uh, don't request from the server too often. You can cache local copies around. So you download an image once, you cache a copy of it and you just keep it around. There's no point in downloading the same image multiple times. And there's also, besides network performance, there's also graphics performance to consider, right? You might want to chill on the animations if, it get, if it's getting a little out of hand. So there's a lot that goes under performance, network, graphics, etc. but this is also super important. All right. Um, a couple more front-end features just to hit on quickly. Offline, don't underestimate this. If you're using an application and you don't have internet and it's working, a lot of work went into this. So offline mode, super important. Um, another one is UX, which is slightly different than UI. So UI is kind of like, how nice does this menu look? Does it have like the right color of gray? But UX is kind of like how intuitive is it to sign up? So pretty much this might be the job of a designer to think about, but also it takes a lot of work to implement this well. Not only to implement the button, making this button look super effing perfect, or also making like the onboarding flow work really well. So it takes a lot of work just to do this and don't underestimate this part. All right. So that's about it I had for front end. Let's keep moving. All right, so let's move on to the back end part, equally important part of any mobile application. Major purpose of the back end is pretty much to power. It's a kind of loose term, but pretty, you guys know what I mean. It kind of powers the mobile front end. It organizes, persists, and returns any relevant data that the application or client might need. All right, so this is, some people call this the server, the back end whatever, but front end versus back end, I hope that separation is clear. All right, so let's just talk through talk through some basic components of a back end, and these are just a couple top ones that, from, that I thought about, all right? So first, the back end serves as a major resource. And what, is, what do I mean by resource? But pretty much all front end apps will request data over some kind of protocol, usually HTTP or the internet, to the back end and the back end will respond with some data. Uh, if you guys ever see this word floating around, it's a very common like CRUD, create, read, update, destroy. It just means that as the back end provides different resources, you should have the ability to probably create new things, read things, update things, and destroy things. All right, so a universal type of logic. Um, also, as a resource, the backend does any type of business logic that might be required. So, you know, a lot of like heavy duty things, it might be the responsibility of the backend to do that rather than having all this business logic in the front end. So, at its core, it's a basically a resource for any client. All right. Um, another thing it does is we kind of talked about this, but backends usually organize the data well. They, they're usually the ones that interface with some kind of database and define some kind of database schema. So a couple big themes for data. You could have user data. Any data specific to a user, password, login, your favorites, your favorite cooking recipes, whatever. And beside user data, there kind of is global data. This is a little weird of a word to use, but pretty much what I mean here is any data that it's needed to power the application itself. So one example of this could be Twitter. Twitter tracks trending data across various topics. This is not relevant to any specific user, but Twitter can track various trends and then present certain trends to users that might be interested. All right. So any data that's not really user specific that powers the application. Um, the backend will also do anything that's remotely smart. So what I mean by this, if you have some kind of smart recommendation engine or something heavy duty, some heavy duty technical feature, that will probably be implemented on the backend. You're not gonna be implementing some crazy machine learning algorithm on iOS. That's gonna be done by a server somewhere. So. The front end usually just taps into the smarts with an interface, but heavy duty technical features are almost always going to be done by the back end. All right. Uh, what do we have next? Oh, this is a lot. Crap. Um, notifications. 
Uh, I'm sure you guys are used to many notifications that happen all the time. Your friend liked your photo. John poked you five times. Um, but pretty much all logic for notifications is also handled by the backend or the server. What triggers one, what goes into one, who gets sent one, what does it say, all that stuff, all right? So all those notifications that pop up on your phone, there's business logic powering and triggering those. So. Um, Backends are usually multi-service, so um, the best way to describe this is just think about Amazon, um, and a lot goes into powering Amazon. So you go to Amazon.com, we all go to Amazon.com, and we interact with one website, and we click like this big buy button. Like all we do is go onto Amazon, we click buy, and we get like a bunch of granola bars, right? But if you ask yourself what actually happened technically once you hit buy, there's so many systems, multiple systems that come into play. Like maybe the Amazon inventory system was updated. Maybe the payment service got initiated. Uh, maybe Amazon's recommendation system got all your transaction details and updates its modeling. So the user, all you do is click buy, but behind the scenes, there's a ton of stuff that might happen across a variety of services, all right? So don't discount stuff like this. When someone says backend, a lot of stuff is going on. Um, Next, I wrote down scaling. Uh, how would your app potentially handle Snapchat level users? If you have this problem, it's actually a really good problem because people are actually using your app. So if you have scaling problems, it actually is a good sign because you know, people are actually using your thing. If people are not using it, you'll never have to worry about scaling. Um, this is a pretty complicated topic, but the one thing I wanna just point out is that this takes collaboration of many engineers. Backend collab with DevOps, collabs with front end to change uh, how scaling works. So this is an effort by everyone, all right, not just back end engineers. Um, finally, uh, this is the last one, guys, promise. I actually wrote a lot of points here, but there's also third party backends that you can use that you don't exactly have to write, all right? So if you want to add analytics, or maybe logging to your app. If you want to answer questions like, how long does this user stay on the homepage? You could plug into maybe some Google Analytics or some third party backend to help you do this, all right? So when I say backend, it doesn't mean that you have to write every single one, um, but you could use other backends that people provide as a service to help you out. And usually people will plug into some third party backend to help them with logging, for example. So. This is another example, right? You don't have to write every single backend or server logic from scratch. Um, all right, so that's enough about backend. Let's just keep moving. I want to touch a little bit more about design. And a lot of engineers overlook design because, you know, whatever, engineering is the best, but that's a little naive. So remember the purpose of design. If you're looking to build a mobile app, you're building a mobile app to be put into a consumer's hand, right? You're not you're not building like a coding library. You're building an app which somebody has to download and if someone's gonna download it, it better be designed well or nobody's gonna use it despite how well it's implemented, all right? So don't neglect the design. Um, actually, so final thing here, I just wanna have this little section called food for thought and it might be just a, a good exercise for any engineers out there to just think about how mobile features are implemented. So one example I just wanted to put here is like Instagram image loading. So many of you have used Instagram. I'm sure many of you know about Instagram, but like if we broke down how they load images, how would we break it down and how would we implement something like this? Because the images load really well on Instagram, right? Uh, on a good connection, we rarely see anything that's loading. Images are loaded right when they scroll they appear when we're offline. How does that even happen? Your camera takes pictures in high res. Do you think Instagram keeps the pics around in high res or does it do some kind of post-processing on the pictures? So one thing that's a good exercise for any engineer is that go open the popular apps and try to break down how they implement their features. Like break down how Instagram does their image loading and it'd be a good exercise for any engineer to try to design how that happens. All right, guys, uh, crap. Okay, I have 15 seconds left. 
Uh, a lot of information in this video, I'll share the doc, but hopefully this was a good breakdown of what it takes to build a mobile app. It's definitely a lot of work besides just learning iOS. All right, guys, hope it was helpful.